reconnect oh, already. I need okay. To, um, get the lamp too so I can show. Oh yeah, look at that. We're ready. All right, let's see. Okay, shalom aleichem. Luchim abayim. Luchim abayim. Welcome to the Netzavli Nazarene Torah Study, Jacksonville. Um, so last time we we had some really bad internet issues, so. If this thing cuts out, please don't be surprised. I will try to go, I'll change it to my phone. We'll make it go off my phone instead of my tablet. Because my phone, I don't have to use the Wi-Fi for that. So anyways, <coughs> but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to try to get this thing shared on Facebook. Let me see. Because so, I can tag you guys in it. And uh, yeah. What is today? Yeah, I guess if you tag us, it will show up. Anyway. Well, your Facebook should, it should have show a notification that we're going yeah. live. Uh, I get a nothing. So yeah, anybody who uh, who is a part who uh, is like the page should get a notification. But I'm gonna send it live on my page. You don't see it? <laughs> All right, just one second. It should, because I just got notified. Sorry about. Sorry for this. One second. Oh, there it is. Okay, so write a post. No, sorry, something, 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 something. <laughs> Rounds of bone. Oh, I can tag some friends. One second, guys. Why is it not letting me tag people? Chat about the invite friends. Hmm, this thing is being funky. Alright, so I just posted, so it should show up on my page, Erica. It, uh, I just posted it, so it should show up on my page. Okay. So if you go to my... Yeah, my Facebook page, it should show up. But it's not showing on the, um, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. But anyways, so tonight we have a special topic, uh, and it was Erica's idea. Thank you very much, Erica. Thank and you. And the, the, topic, the topic is a modest dress. Well, you can vote. It's, it's, a, to, it's a toe stepper, so some people are probably not going to like some of the things we say, but... Uh, but oh well, we're, we're just going to try to get it done tonight. Um, so basically, what we, we're, we're going to do is we have a bunch of questions. Uh, we're going to try to answer them tonight. We, I made this little questionnaire. Maybe I'll give you guys a quick preview of the questions that we got. I got a total, I got eight questions. It says, uh, for first one, it says, how is modesty defined? Do I know what the Bible says about modesty? I kind of wonder if those two should be switched places because it's like, it's almost like, do I initially know what the Bible says, and then what does yeah. the Bible actually say? So maybe we'll do question number two first. We can give our opinions and then go to attack scripture. Uh, number three, does my apparel provoke others to lust? Number four, do I dress to show off? Five, how do I carry myself? <coughs> Six, is dressing modestly only for women? Number seven, when is it okay to dress immodestly? And number eight, am I willing to be different or to be kadosh, set apart? So, All right. Uh, first thing, let me start off with the blessing of study. The blessing of study. Okay, I will say the blessing and then a quick prayer. I wanted to do this before, but... So I will say the blessing. Uh, do you want to say it in English? Hey, uh, I'll, just, I'll just bother. Okay. So, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with his commandments and commands us to engross ourselves in the words of Torah. So yeah, and a quick little mini prayer. I guess I, I guess I'll just go ahead and start saying, but uh, Abba, Avinu Sheba Shemaim, B'Hakasha Azov Manu, help us, Father, help us Limur Devarecha Lod Devaram, to speak your words, not our words, to let. Let this study edify anybody who's going to listen. Help us not say things in such a way that may push people away, but may draw people in. May you draw people in. in a Bashem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Does anyone want to add to that? Amen. Okay, we're good, we're good. Okay, so anyways, I guess I can go ahead and say. So, <coughs> I might have to get my e-sword up real quick. One second. I'm going to go ahead and try to attack the first question. Were you able to send, uh, post it? Post the yes. video. Okay, cool. So your friends should be watching. My friends should be watching. Yeah. Voice crack. So let me pull up Esor because the first question I got is uh, and it's got the uh, I have a bunch of scriptural references to answer to see what the Bible says. Actually, let's do a flip flop. 
I'm going to do a flip flop like I was talking about earlier. Number two, which is really going to be number one tonight. Do I know what the Bible says about modesty? Does anybody want to go first to give your opinions about <coughs> what do you think, at least what you think the Bible says about modesty? Hmm. Still waiting on Well, I'll, I'll start by saying I've always thought of it as, you know, clothing. Okay. But some of the scriptures that I've found, you know, it goes deeper than that and into clothing ourselves with righteousness and salvation. Oh, not just, so not just. Right. So modesty, like, so you're going, yeah, definitely, you're going deeper. Because, um, yeah, a lot of times, well, at least when we think of dressing modestly, the first thing, obviously, we think of dressing. But modesty doesn't just involve dressing, like you said. It can, um, there's a form of righteousness within modesty. It goes into the character of the, of the person. Yeah. How they so, act and how they so respond. So that's, yeah, that's. the words they might use. Even though that's going deeper, I feel at the same time that's a bit more broad in general because, like, modesty is taking that particular char characteristic and putting it into your dress, the way you dress up. But what, what does modesty mean? That's a good question. You want to give, give your shot? Well, you I mean, um, like, a simple understanding of what modesty is is in how modesty is actually performed. Is that you know that you're able to excel in a certain area be it positive or negative but you re retract yourself from going there you restrict yourself for a reason uh not just for yourself but for others so i mean use the example um you know superman right yeah, of course he's strong right but at the same time when he picks up lois lane he doesn't crush her or toss her out he controls his power. He controls his strength. In the same way, you're modest in your <coughs> actions and re your reactions. Yes, a person might offend you, but you don't have to react to them in your most powerful way. You measure yourself. Hence, modesty. Same yeah. thing in your dress or your attitude. You limit yourself. Yes, you can go this way in that direction, but you limit yourself to bless others and to bless yourself. Yeah, so I mean, when I think of modesty, that's my thought. Yeah, that's what we're going for right now. When I think of modesty, I just think of literally the opposite of being. Oops, one second. So when I think of, uh, man, this computer's acting really slow. I can't turn off the volume. Anyway, so when I think of modesty, I think of basically the opposite of boasting. Um, you see, when I was younger, I've always practiced martial arts, and one thing that I just like couldn't stand though. One second. Okay, so one thing I couldn't stand was people who had a really cocky attitude. Yeah. That drove me up the wall. When people exalt themselves or say, I could do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna beat these people up, you know. And even though I've always practiced martial arts, I never like I ne would never want to like give myself credit. You know, like I, one thing that would make me so uncomfortable is like people would ask me and a friend, which one of you two would win in a fight? I hate that question. I cannot stand it because it's like, even if it's true, even if I could beat the other person, that's still being, in my opinion, if I say, oh, win, I'll take them out easy. To me, that's being very immodest. That's being very cocky. I'm exalting myself. Uh, I'm only taking this guy out if Hashem allows me to take this guy out or, right. or, or anoints me to do it. That's true. That's true. You, I don't care how good you are. You can't work out your esophagus. So you can be a, a, a champion MMA fighter. But if one dude, like, just a crazy crazy weird punch and punches you in the throat, you're done. Like, you can't... Hey, you, you I mean, the W took out the, I mean, the, yeah, the lion, so... Not, not to get off topic, but you see the UFC. All it takes is okay, one Okay, my friend Taylor is strike. watching. Shalom, Taylor. It is over. Shalom. It's okay. nice to see that you're watching. I hope this will bless you tonight. But anyway, so continue with your thought. I mean, uh, not to get off topic, but, like, you know, you look at the UFC. If any of you watched it, I mean, all it takes is one lucky strike. Yeah. And that person is asleep, sitting in just about anything. I mean, all it takes is one lucky hit, and the person's down. Yeah, and if you, you know, just like I started covering my head, and you know, I was pretty much, pretty much solitary wear dresses now. Okay. Um, and that's you know that's my own conviction, but when you know when you start dressing more appropriately to your faith. Your, you know, the inward part has to match that too. So, if I'm, 
you know, dressing the part but not acting the part. Yeah. Dressing doesn't really, you know, give the right impression that, that we should. Yeah, you know, it, it can kind of be like a bad witness if you're dressing and you're not acting. Yeah. Like, it's like, you know, people can tell, um, people can kind of tell, like, the way you are, I guess, like, with your actions. I mean, actions, you know, there's that saying that actions speak louder than words, but I guess actions can also speak louder than dress. Like, but, uh, yeah, that can go, <coughs> that can go in a pretty deep way, but, um. What did Mr. Yacht say about it? About what? Um. He refers to certain religious leaders or religious people as whitewashed tombs. He describes them as having been decorated beautifully, um, but at the same time, inside are dead men's bones. So just because a person might be outwardly, you know, beautiful, inside they could be if, if, outside, outside uh, beautiful but inside it could you know, be uh, very rotten <laughs> Taylor says the baby is like really cute <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it I'm sure, I'm sure if he heard that Taylor he'd really appreciate it so, <laughs> I'm, not getting, I'm not getting the comments on this page so that's why it's, it's kind of making me annoyed right now I have to go all the way up there to check um, hmm. yeah. I, don't can, I don't know if you can fix that I really don't know I either don't know. But I think our friend Ellie is watching. Shalom, Ellie. Hello. Hello Chabad, welcome. But, uh, yeah, so that's some crazy stuff. So I guess we kind of get in our own opinions on what it, uh, modesty is. Yeah, this is our... Um, which you know, is not exactly the same as modest dress. So when we had the question, uh, the, the first one that I switched around to the second one, how is modesty defined? You see, I still had clothes in mind. So I looked up scriptures to that deal with clothing. So the first scripture that I, I came up with was, uh, well, I don't know, does anybody know how to say Timothy in Hebrew? Timotheus. Timotheus, I don't know. So other I think Timotheus? it's Tim. Tim. I think it's Tim. It's Pelibet <laughs> Tet. So it's it's First Timothy 2, 9. Let me find that up real quick. I'm going to be reading from the Hebrew Roots version. This is I'm not right James here. Scott Trim's Hebrew right. Roots version. She's got, she's got oh, you got it? Okay. Yep. Uh, if you prepare. <laughs> Likewise, I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothing, modestly and discreetly, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly garments. Hmm. That's, a, that's the only part of it. So, it sounds like... I was kind of like wondering about this because it's like without braided hair, I kind of wanted to, I was really wondering what it says in the Greek for braided hair because it's like in some cases, like some people might find braided hair more attractive than straight hair. I don't know. I was kind of curious about that. Well, at the same time, it's not about attraction, is it? Is it? <laughs> I mean. Or if you have your hair covered, then, you know. Yeah. You don't got to worry about either. Well, <laughs> what I'm saying is the context of modesty is not about attracting, but in a sense, I guess you would say not attracting in the man. Oh yeah, of course. You, you know what I mean? It is. Oh, I don't want to go too deep. There's a, a level where a person can dress a certain way, and they could attract a wrong response, and then it goes to the motive of the person as to why they dress this way or that way. I mean, it's a motive behind everything you do, yeah. whether it be to glorify man or to be or to glorify God. Yeah, I see what you're saying because like some days, some days I won't wear the head covering if I don't feel like I'm very spiritual that day because I don't want to be, you know. Yeah. That's why that's why I do it. Some people just wear it for looks or you know fashion or whatever, but I specifically do it because of you know. Uh oh, uh, uh, Keith is with us. Shalom, Keith. Sorry to interrupt you. Shalom, Kathy. All right. I gotta say hi to these people yeah, because this thing over here is not telling um, me squat. Let me try to see. If, let me see what happens when I go on my my phone. Sorry about that. Well, oh yeah, here we go again. But yeah, I, I agree. Um, I don't want to get too deep into it because that's a conversation we had in the car, and trust me, you don't want to hear that conversation. What, what, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, here we go. No, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> but yeah, there is. There are some things that's a little awkward. To talk yeah, about. yeah, yeah. I mean, but truly speaking, what a person wears. In a manner, does kind of define their character in the truest sense. Yeah. If a person. All right, uh, cool. So I can. My phone is working better on my phone. So. Right. If a person is dressing like a penguin, um, I mean, you expect a certain demeanor. You expect a certain attitude for that person to carry. But at the same time, if that person doesn't carry it, that kind of ruins not just the. 
uh, what's the what's the what's the word? Um, the perception for people that dress in a certain way, not just for that individual, but for everyone else. You know, so give that accountability to the brethren and to the sister. I mean, yeah, because ultimately we're representing the Most High. So I agree. Um, every time we dress, you know, especially like again when I put the head covering on, it's a reminder to me that okay, I made a commitment to Him. I I have to you know live up to that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things we have in the way that we uh, present ourselves, not just in the clothing. To be set apart. Yeah, to be set apart. Not just in clothing, but in our mindset and our actions and our reactions. It was supposed to show us set apart. And the things we do. Shabbos, you know, that is a part of, in, in a manner, I don't know, I might be stretching, a part of modesty. Because you have the ability to excel or go beyond, but you restrict yourself. You know, you yeah, know, you keep shoppers, yeah. you know. I could go to the you know, this place, go there, go buy this, that, but I'm not. I'm modest with my time. Yeah, and it's I'm, kind of a self control. Yeah, it is a self control. Mm -hmm. You know, and, well, I mean what the you know the world you're in the world but not the world and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, what does life have to do with not Oh thank you. Can I have it? And and you know dressing Dressing could be the same way, you know. Yeah. If, you, if you don't have the self control to say, oh, well, you know, that dress is so cute, I just have to wear it, even though it's a little, you know, revealing. So, yeah. So. Okay. Um, so, we good? We good? Oh. So, next scripture Aleph Kepha, Pelek Gimel, Gimel Vadalit. So, we got First Kepha, First Peter, Chapter 3, Verses 3 and 4. I guess I'll let me see. Let me see. Let me see. First Kepha, what? First Kepha, uh, Shimon Kepha 3, 1 Peter 3, verses 3 and 4. So it says, this, she's basically, or she, he's basically repeating what the Rav Shaul, uh, Rav Shaul uh, was saying, but you know, it's coming from Kepha. It says, and adorn not yourselves with the external ornaments of curls of the hair or, of, or the wearing of gold trinkets or of costly garments but the hidden man of the heart in the incorruptible yeah. adornment of the meek and quiet spirit which is of great value before Hashem Adonai alright there's two parts to it I'm looking at I mean you gotta, you gotta acknowledge the element I'm just thinking you know um, you have the statement, okay? You have the instruction. But you have to ask the reason why is he giving these instructions? Why does he have to? It shouldn't just be common sense, but he has to give these instructions to us. But even with the instructions, we got to wonder um, not just why, but does he mean specifically these things? Or is he talking in general? Like, yeah, you know, oh, she's wearing braided hair, oh, she's born to whatever, whatever. No, I, I'm not getting that. Yeah, I think, that, I, I, think see, I see your point. I think he's basically point. just giving examples. It, that's, that's what I'm going, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So a lot of these things when it comes to the clothing, at, what, what does Shalom Mishiach, Yochanan and Shalom Yehmi, Shalom you know, Jeremy. What, what does Mashiach say about things of this nature? He constantly preached about not just the outward, but mostly the inner. Yeah. The inner person. That what that's what needs to make clean. That's what needs to be made right. It's not what goes in that causes a person to be defiled, but what comes out of a person. And the same thing that I'm, I'm finding that a, a line in here where that might be the same situation when it comes to uh, modesty and apparel. It's not so much what you put on, but it's what comes out of you that you know that uh, causes you know, the issues, whether it's good yeah. or bad. We got we got one uh, comment from my oh. my good friend Taylor. She says, in my opinion, in my opinion, it's about wearing whatever you, you're comfy in. Don't go out naked, agreed. But if you want to show some skin, good for you. Does well, anybody want to respond to that? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. How much skin are you going to show? I yeah, how much skin are you going to show? I guess, yeah, Taylor, I guess we'd have to be a bit more specific. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, there's a certain point of skin wherein, you know, you get arrested. You okay. know, I'm just saying. Um, I mean, right. hey, to each their own, if they want to get arrested, okay. She, she said another thing. She said, it doesn't matter what you wear or don't wear. It's about your faith and your loyalty to your faith. Why does what you look, dress, like matter when you're also told it doesn't? Where does it say it doesn't? 
Um, let me try to think. I'm trying to think. Well, the question I think we could ask is. Uh, like, I'm sorry. Where does it say it does it in context? That's what. what it, it, I'm reading it so fast. I don't even know if I understand the question. But the, well, if it doesn't matter about what you're wear, it's about your faith. So the question is, could dressing actually be a dressing modestly? Could that actually be a part of your faith? That's the question. Um, That's another yes. question we could ask. Okay. Absolutely. Everything you do is a part of your faith. I mean, either you're a purchased possession and you are no longer your, your own, and Hashem provides you your daily bread, your clothing, your job, your, your everything. Either you're purchased or you're not purchased. Okay. If you're purchased, you're owned. If you're owned, you don't make the decision on your own. Hashem has given us free will, but it's within His guidelines. You know, it's a, it's a, a certain area of obedience to what he said, to what he's instructed us to do. And it's a level of obedience that a person must strive for. Um, and, you know, everybody's at a different level of obedience. She, she says, why does it matter? Does that make your faith stronger? Dressing. Let me read the scripture. 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 10. It says, likewise, I want women to adorn... A little bit louder. Likewise, I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothing, modestly and discreetly. And then it goes on about the, the hair and the curls. and. Close um, if, if you don't mind. The whole so right there it says, you know, reference, we should do reference. proper clothing and modestly. Again, what are, what are the outlines of that? We don't, I haven't found anything that says, you know, your skirt has to be so many inches long. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but if you go back to how, you know, as a cultural thing, I think that's why, you know, we're interested in this because we've lost a lot of that culture that, that dictates how we dress and yeah. You know, a lot of people just have. So, what scripture was that that you just read? First Timothy two nine through ten. I remember um, back years, years, years back, you would go to some churches, you know, Baptists and even some Pentecostal churches, some mm -hmm. where you would have the um, the mother of the congregation, and the mother of the congregation would stand at the door with a ruler. <laughs> And with some extra prayer shawls or some something extra, she had, she had, she had a bag or a, a box full of stuff just for. Then someone didn't come in. Yeah, someone if then someone didn't come in dressed uh, appropriately for service, she would walk up to him. Oh, come here, baby. Come here. You look so beautiful. Come here. Let me put this on. This will make you look like a woman. And, and she put a, a long skirt around her and pin it up. I'm like, <laughs> wait, who we talking? No, this is way back okay. in the day. Uh, in some churches, even today, um, the, the mother of the church would come in and dress the women. Uh, you know, and I respect that. You know, yeah, I do too. I mean, if, especially if it's someone that isn't used to coming and they don't know what the dress code is. You know, you can't expect them to dress how you think they should. Yeah, um, that has to come from you know, again, the inward. Conviction. I guess you gotta you have to let the Ruach Hakodesh, the Holy Spirit, kind of guide you and tell you. Um, but one one guess one way I want to ask uh, answer an earlier point Taylor uh, asked or a question that she asked. She says, "Does that make your faith stronger?" I'm assuming you mean, "Does dressing modestly make your faith stronger?" I, I would say it goes the other way around. Your dress doesn't affect your faith. Your faith affects the way you dress. There you go. So the faith or the faith is the root of the issue, but. Um, she said, okay, one, one second, what else she said? She says, she's not, not religious in any sense, except I believe in God, so I'm probably not properly understanding. But when I think of a higher power, I think that no matter what, God will love me. If, if I dress provocative or not, he will love me. Your clothes shouldn't matter with your relationship with your faith. What's the scripture that says if we love him, we'll keep his commandments? Well, she says she's not really religious, oh, okay. so she believes well, in God. Okay. So. Well, let me speak on that now, because being a woman, you know... Louder, please. <laughs> sorry. Um, you know, you don't... What's that saying? If you dress a certain way, you're going to attract a certain kind of men. And, um, you know, that you may attract the wrong kind of men based on how you dress. Um I can get into that too much without yeah. Well, you know, getting too picky about it. But but it does it does you know I've heard um well let's talk about that then. Let's talk about how it makes men feel when they see women mm. <laughs> not dress how they 
Like, this, is, well, see, this is the part that, that kind of. This is the this part. This is the conversation where, in the book. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so we're not going this way? Oh, uh, well, she wants to go that way. No, I, I really yeah. think it's important because, like, one day I was, um, I had a skirt, heels, you know, I wasn't dressing like I do now, but, um, but I, like, bent down and my husband's like, get up off the ground, what are you doing? Like, bending down in the skirt, and I'm like, I didn't know, you know. But it was important to me that, that that mattered to him and that he wanted to make sure I wasn't, you know, exposing myself to whoever else or, you know, just, yeah. and we, you know, we had a certain respect that how we dress represented each other. Like if he's going out looking like a slob, you mm -hmm. know, that's kind of bad on my character. Same thing for me. If I'm not, you know, dressing the part, it kind of reflects, you know, on both of us. So, um. Yeah, I'll let you go. Uh, Yochanan asked a good question. He says, what is your motivation? Is the goal to tempt others? If so, is that an honorable motivation? <laughs> you said that. <laughs> you came in late, bro. <laughs> okay, well, I don't, you see, I don't like getting into this because this turns, whenever I talk about how I feel about a way women dress, I turn in, I suddenly, I'm the bad guy. Like, I'm just the bad guy who just can't control himself. Um, okay, I, I do believe... Oh, Taylor said yes, girl. <laughs> okay, yeah. nice. Good job, Lil Kashem. Well, we're hoping that blesses you, uh, Taylor. But, uh, okay, me personally, Olive, how do I, like, say this without, like, opening up Pandora's box? Um, okay, so, so we men, we have... Oy vey, indeed. <laughs> we have, uh, what is that you called a, a weakness? Or uh, it's a, we have a proclivity. We have a proclivity. A born in innate... Uh, an inherent in, in, born in I mean, yeah. inherent uh, proclivity or desire for whatever your bloodline has in it. Okay. Yeah. We so can go from men, there. Men respond to the appearance of the opposite gender uh, I guess a lot more strongly than women do. Is that Would you guys agree with me on that? Uh, well, in Strong, stronger, yes. In, in general, there, there are outliers. There are definitely outliers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've had girls, you know, ask, solic try to solicitate me for certain things, and I was like, oh, hey, I can't, sorry. <laughs> well, but, I mean, depending on who you believe, but there have been studies done that, you know, more men admit to, um, you know, how looking at a woman, and, you know, it's more, it affects them more than it does women. Yeah. So would you say what are women more into, like the personality type, or what would you say? Yeah, but not always. I mean, I've been around women who, you know, are just as bad. Okay. I don't want to say as bad as guys because you know, it's okay. all based on the individual. But so, so me personally. To me, this affects me religiously. I'm not going to say that dressing immodestly will cause men to do certain things to a woman because sometimes I can get into a power thing versus a, I just can't control myself, I just have to go at it. But um, but for me, for me personally, as a religious person, there are certain things I don't want on my mind that I don't want to linger in my mind, especially like, um, and when I, when I see certain things, when I see women dress, you know, we men are we're, we're attracted to curves. So like if I see someone wearing super tight stuff and I'm wearing curvy and I'm wearing, and she's really curvy looking, like that can like affect me. I may not run over and like, you know, cat call her or touch her, God forbid, cause fish alone or do any of that stuff. But when I go home, that might plant, implant an image in my head and it might stay there a little too long. And I might be thinking of stuff and that can cause me, it's like a, it's like a gateway to make me think of other things. So like, of course I can try to control myself, but at the same time, I really would like it if people, if women were, uh, more considerate, we, more considerate know, because I mean it's yeah I can try to control myself but it would be a lot nicer if I didn't have to try so hard. Well, the, the, here, and of course there are some men that will go completely crazy over a girl wearing sweatpants and a sweatshirt. So like there's that kind of issue as well. But. There comes a place where it becomes you know a certain level of self respect. You know if you don't want the cat calls if you don't want people reacting to you in a negative way or whatever, then don't dress in a way that will encourage that type of reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if just for lack of concept or ideas, uh, if I dress like uh, a bum, people are going to react to me in, an, in a certain type of way. That I may, I, though, I'm not, some, though, some though I'm not a bum, but I'm dressing like one, 
people are not, you know, people are like, give me a, a couple of dollars. I'm like, what do you need dollars for? I got a job. Yeah. Uh, why, why are you throwing change at me? Oh, it didn't cut off. Oh, no, no, it's not cut off. No, go ahead. It says low battery. So. Oh, low battery. I'm like, cut off. I mean, I mean uh, people throw change at me. I'm like, oh, I'm not a bum. Why, why are you throwing change at me? Oh, my, my bad. I thought you. But you see what I mean? The way you dress, the way you behave does have an effect. And people will view you and treat you in a certain manner. And, uh, and that's but on the, the same token, mm-hmm. we can't treat people, um, you know, differently based on... Based on the dress. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, he made a statement... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He made a statement earlier about um, when... Uh, if you come across a person that uh, is dressed uh, in, immodestly or not modest. Uh, something that you can do. I mean, you can do anything, you can do everything, but something that might help you as a tool to control your emotions, the, the, the heart, the seat of your emotions, is to pray for the person. I mean, that's instant combat because you might be in a battle in that realm. So why not go to war? Each time you find yourself in a battle of that sort, pray for that person, pray for yourself. You know, and that will take your mind off of not just that. It'll, it'll take the power away. That that uh, that that temptation. It'll take it away. Because as Shim said that. Um, <laughs> Yo, come on, sir. Are you talking about me dressing like a bum? <laughs> uh, Taylor, Taylor, you, bro. <laughs> Taylor made a good point. She she mm. made an interesting point. No matter what she's wearing, she. <laughs> it's okay. She, she says no matter what she's wearing. She never would deserve cat calling. Well, if you dress like a cat, expect dogs chasing you. I'm just saying. Is that wrong? A cat, okay. That, that's, uh, I think I said that wrong. Well, here, I said it wrong. To me, my, my issue is, um, <laughs> well, what, what is the woman's intention? Though? What, if, what if a woman wants cat calling? So, like, I mean, then you, she, you're going to get it. I mean, I mean, everybody has their uh, level of Self gratification. So that, that's an issue that we don't. We have to make an assumption. We have to assume that she, one, she doesn't want cat calling, and then we, she's get receiving it. So hey, like, I dress like a police officer. I get respect. <laughs> I dress like something else. I'm not gonna get as much respect as I would like to have gotten. I mean, it plays a role. You go to a job interview. <laughs> you you want to get hired? You dress in a suit. Come with a tie. Oh, now I'm getting. You know, I, I, I mean, confirm that. I, I yeah. got. I went to McDonald's dressed in a suit, <laughs> and I got hired. That was one of the reasons. He's the manager actually came and he stood me up in front of all the other ones because it was like one of those mass mm. orientations. Okay, I, I think we have a good. I, I feel like we have a good situation that may help Haley a little bit. Um, and I think it's just escaping me. <laughs> yeah. it. But uh, well, if you, I mean, if you, you know, if the guys can admit that skin, you know, skin showing is a factor then we need to be responsible as women and, you know, cover as much of our skin as we can without... Well, we're not saying, you know, go full, uh, what do you call it? Um, you know, with the... With the um, well, I just mean like uh, some women... Not, 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 well, put, put it this way. Uh, this, this is what I want. Just have your brother in mind. If you're a believer. Or ask a guy, you know, does this look okay? Like, how does this make you feel or... You know, ask your dad. <laughs> He'll tell you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well. But, um... Yeah, yeah so she, s- oh. she says dressing comfortably and walking down the street doesn't mean you want some dirty dude yelling at us. I, 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 I get you. I get you. Um, I, well, so, you, have, you have to understand, <laughs> not every guy has good sense. Yeah. Okay? Not every guy this has good sense. This is kind of what was about so, to go into the point that I was going to make. A person before. could be wearing, I mean, uh, a, a, you know, wrap like five sweaters over. <laughs> I mean, they could just be, you know, all out, you know, extra layer. Like they're, like, they're like a snowman. They even dress like a snowman. Okay? <laughs> One guy might see a lump and lose his mind. Okay? Okay, there's, there's certain ridiculous. people out there that are just like that. Okay? I mean, just be real. Some what people are just like that. I don't know if I should read that one out though. Okay. No, 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 no. Well... Just like in response to, um, for anyone that's being tempted, not by an individual, but by the spirit at, at work. Not per se, but by that individual. All right, let me, let me back up. Let me back up, okay? First thing you got to understand, 
is what is a temptation? Okay, a temptation is simply a suggestion to your mind. That is a temptation. That's it. Break it down, simplify. A, tem a temptation is a suggestion to your mind to do one thing or another. Just That's all it is. Suggestion to the mind. If when you're tempted, a suggestion to your mind comes to think about something inappropriate, okay? Take that thought captive as the scripture says. Take, it, take that thought captive to obedience of Mashiach, all right? Obedience of Messiah. Yeah, that's the instruction you were given, all right? Take the, take, the, take the thought captive. Pray about it. Pray for the person. They don't know. They don't know that they're tempting you. Or they don't know that what they're wearing causes a temptation, okay? That person might be innocent, not know any different. They might not even believe. They, 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 they don't know any different, okay? But take that thought captive. But for the individuals that make those, those loud, uh, obnoxious calls and stuff like that, pray for them too. For those that make negative suggestions and stuff, whatever, pray for them too. Because that takes the power away from them, Okay? Love them. Love your love the enemies, right? Love your enemies. Pray for those, who Pray for those that persecute you. But at the same time, you gotta be righteous yourself. Okay? You gotta be light. You gotta be salt. You can't, I mean, you can't be doing the wrong thing and you know. Love in the name. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? You, love in the name. Yeah, you can't be doing the wrong thing on a consistent basis. I repeat, a consistent basis and be trying to rep the name. Or not desire this, or not desire that. You got. There comes a point where you gotta take a step back and like, okay, let me go back and analyze my life, or analyze the situation, and make some small corrections. I mean, all it takes is one step towards righteousness, one step towards Mashiach, and he'll run. He'll run back towards you, and he'll meet you, cover you, protect you, because Hashem's a gentleman. You may not know that, but Hashem is a perfect gentleman. I'm not going to preach that message yet. Okay, I'm not going to preach that message till okay. this Shabbos. I'm going to preach that message. Yeah, we'll be waiting on it though. Oh yeah, that's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. So Yochanan says uh, the alcoholic bears responsibility for any drink she takes. Nevertheless, should you knowingly drink in front of them? Oh wait. Oh, okay. So it depends on what it is. If it's uh, scotch, I'm like, yo, man, go for it. Harry, what? No, no. <laughs> okay, so so Taylor brings up a point. She says, "What if a woman and sexually assaulted?" And was and she was wearing hardly anything. Is it her fault though? It is not. And I repeat, it goes back to that individual where you have the person dressed in a snowman suit, and yet he sees one lump and he loses his mind. That's that guy. <laughs> okay, that's that guy. And well, Hashem will repay him for that. She said something about wearing comfortable clothing. I How know, comfortable? Is that? I, yeah, I, well, comfortable I know clothing. a lot of women that feel comfortable oh, wearing. Um, their bra and a, a string top, you know, and mm -hmm. to me that's completely inappropriate. And I would, I could understand like how that would attract the wrong kind of people. Um, but you know, but to them, like they wouldn't see it that way. They're like, I'm dressed, you know. <laughs> yeah. So. Also, it's the setting. I mean, if you know that you might cause a traffic stop, okay, just be wareful. Shalom, you know, just be, just, just be mindful. Now. I mean, this is just me. You know, I don't want my wife causing issues outside the house. And I don't want her dressed in a certain way outside the house. What she does inside the house with me, that's mine. That's mine. That's 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 behind closed doors. Yeah, vice versa. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's the same thing goes for you for her, yeah. It goes with the hair, like you were saying earlier. Uh in the Jewish tradition, the wife covers her hair. You know, be it a wig, be it a uh, stenol, I think it's called. Um, because the hair is the glory of the woman, and that's only for her husband. So is the rest of the body for her husband. I understand, just here I go, I'm ranting again. Here I, I understand, you know, some women out there trying to attract a man. I dig it, and you want to show a little flesh here and there. I'm like, I understand that. But at the same time, look at what you're attracting. Be careful what you're attracting. If you're looking for a righteous man, dress righteously. If you're looking for a thug, dress thuggish. Don't be, and don't complain when you get a thug that treats you bad. You ask for it. But at the same point, you can make teshuvah. You can repent. You can put something on. You can turn and look for something different. The options are all yours. 
I mean, okay, I, so Taylor says she thinks Maddie and her, her friend Maddie and her are going to Facebook Live their reaction to this later. Also, I don't know. I'm just saying, be careful what you wear. I mean, especially in this age with all this. You, oh, see, yeah, yeah. you see, I would agree, you know, like maybe, you know, if women aren't seeking out to get, you know, messed with, I agree that, you know, no matter how she's dressed, it, what if her intentions are, you know, pure, yeah, no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't mess with that. But at the, pro the problem is we can't get rid of the sinful nature yeah. of mankind. Sin we can't. Sins out as there. much as it should be that way, there. the problem is it's not that way, unfortunately. Like, I wish I could just turn my flesh off like that just by, oh, it's... I wish, I, you know, you could desire that all the people <laughs> that would do certain things that you described in your text uh, would be removed altogether. Hey, I, I would like to see that too. I would like to also see them repent. I'd like to see them in the kingdom of, of Hashem. I'd like to see them make Teshuvah. I'd like to see them come to know Messiah as Lord and Savior. That's what I desire more than anything. Because Hashem said, I don't, I don't desire that any man should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of Mashiach. That's Hashem's desire. He's not, going to usurp, he's, a, he's not going to usurp your free will. Okay? He's not going to do that. He's a gentleman. So, in those situations, just to be careful. That's well, all right, I'm saying. So, so there's also another problem. You know, some women do dress modestly. I mean, depending on how you define it. Mm -hmm. um, for example, some women do cover up a lot. Yeah. But yeah. Th there will still be men. Um, there will still be men who will do bad things, uh, like mess with that woman. Yeah. So what are we doing? They'll find a way to be perverted. Yeah, yeah, yeah they'll find that's a way. The, that's so the what, what, what kind of like suggestions would you guys offer for such an issue like that? Like, uh, like I said, first things first, take the thought captive. But if you're not a believer, do get you know start believing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? First, here, here, first step, get redeemed. That's the first step. After that, you know. Come talk to me. Yeah, because it's, <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit yeah. that convicts us of sin and convicts us of what, you know, what he's going to teach us. So, Taylor, again, she says, uh, example, my pajamas, shorts, while at my house, the men should have severe consequences for the things they do, though not just women for wearing clothes. I feel it. All right, one more time. Example, my pajamas, shorts, while at my house, at my own house. You fine. Wear those shorts out at home. <laughs> okay. At home. And then she says, the men should so how did you have men coming in and out? Close the door. You can't come in right now. All right, anyway. Take a number or <laughs> something. The <laughs> men should have severe consequences for the things they do, though not just women for wearing clothes. This is what? You want to read it? Yeah. Basically, she's saying men should be responsible for how they dress as well. We should. Oh, Absolutely. for how we dress? Yeah. Oh, totally. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, I think we're, I, I think the uh, penalty for us is much higher. <laughs> what, for dressing modestly? If we, oh, yes. Yeah, if we dress um, immodestly, we instantly go to jail. Yeah, we go to jail. <laughs> Game over, and a lot of guys in prison, and um, yeah, I know a lot of guys in prison. Thankfully, the guys I know, they're not involved in anything like that. But she says they're just shorts. Shorts? What do you mean shorts? I mean, simply put, if you're wearing it at home, that's your domain. You good. She says she has leg tats she wants to show. Um, show to who? Your husband? Fine. <laughs> you know, I mean, simply put, all this, your whole body is for Hashem and for your husband, not for the whole world. No, no, not for how they dress, for how they treat women who dress how they want. So basically, it don't, so it kind of makes it sound like she's saying that it's wrong if a man messes with a woman and he doesn't like pay for it. I mean, there, there's definitely, <laughs> I mean, there should definitely be consequences if, if a guy, uh, you know, assaults a woman. It, there should definitely be consequences. Assaults a woman. Uh, I think the Torah says that's death penalty. Oh no! And I think first. Uh, I think he has to. Either, I think it's either a death penalty or he has to pay a dowry. He has to marry her or something. Along no, no, no. Lines. That, that's that's. I think that's in the case of uh, having sex before marriage. Yeah, you're but supposed it, to it, pay it, a dowry and yeah. you have to you have to marry the woman and take yeah, care of her for yeah, the rest yeah. of your life. You know, I, hey, simply put, we're, I'm sorry we're not living in a biblical time as far as you know the but whole I world. Thought we do live in a biblical. Uh, time. I, 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 that's what I said. That's what I said. As far as you know. Um, 
the United States the culture, is right? yeah we're not living in the, uh, the United States or in some of some many countries are not following the Torah okay they're not they're not following they're not observant to it they don't they're not valuing it what I'm saying is we try and we value it we want you to value it we want you to encourage other people to value it. And when more that, people valued it, we wouldn't be assaulting women so much, I guess. Like that also, and there'll be a penalty, a, the, well, the proper a penalty. penalty for that. And I'm, hey, everybody's guilty of a lot of things. Simply put, and if we got the penalty that we were supposed to have gotten, the earth would be empty. And and speaking on that, like the Muslims, you know, a, a lot of the rest of the world, they still, you know, they still dress a lot more modestly than America does, and. And America, in general, you know, is setting a really bad example for everyone. Yeah. But, uh, but specifically, you know, the Muslims do like they have a really big problem with how the women dress here, and um, yeah, in and, all and, Europe. and that's one of the. I think there's a scripture that says something about you know the chosen ones will you know that will bring them to jealousy because you'll look at the other ones and say, well, you know, how come they're dressing more modestly than than we are? You know, and um, yeah. Yeah, if your righteousness, your, your righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the of the of Fushim. Fushim, uh, yeah, yeah, the Pharisees. Yeah. That's just one of the areas where you can uh, see that. And I think, I think in you know, the there's so much immodesty in our culture right now that you know, even trying to tackle it is such a difficult task because people what, don't yeah. know what. It I hate is. to ask this question, but I think the main issue that makes people freak out is the idea that. How a woman can dress can cause a man to assault her. Well, here, here's a that's, part. That's the big issue. All right, here, here, I'll, I'll look at it this way. It's not so much the dress that causes uh, a, a, a very wicked person to assault another person. It's already in them to do it. This is just a trigger. Okay, It's just a trigger that they saw and decided to go with it. That's all it is. The person needs Mashiach. They need, they need to be delivered. Plain and simple. They have an unclean spirit operating in them, which causes them to act out in such a manner. And certain triggers at certain times can cause that action yeah. to occur. Like I said, a woman could be dressed like a snowman. And still, the person could be, can, can be triggered to do that. Um... It's unfortunate. And we're not. It say, we're not. We wouldn't say that the woman should be punished for it. No, 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 no. This is just the. This, this is, is reality. This is an unfortunate consequence yeah. in a broken world. And it's increasing more and more and more in this nation. I mean, I mean, just just bear with me here. You have certain priests in certain religions that are messing with the young. Oof. Okay, and you're worried about dress. Okay, uh, I'm just saying. It's already in those individuals to do wrong. And it needs to come out of them. They need to be delivered. They need to be sanctified. They need to get with Hashem. They need to get they need to get redeemed. Plain and simple. Yeah. And it, I I'm completely, you know, kind of reversing what my grandparents did because they went to one of those churches where you have to cover your head, mm -hmm. you have to wear skirts, and um I I watched um like the old black and white cheaper by the dozen yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. in that video like the girl goes to the beach and she's like she's she's just pulling her you know her sock down and barely exposing her knee and it was like you know such a big deal and you know I, I think that so many people don't realize how fast we've like deteriorated oh, yeah. our modesty oh yeah, yeah. Um, and but like for my grandma um, you know it was a what do you call it it was like a liberating thing for her to be able to not wear a head covering or not wear skirts. Yeah. She can wear pants now and she can, you know, go out and do whatever. I don't know. But um, but it, it's kind of funny to me, you know, because I, I just feel like, do you remember that picture that Rebecca McCormick put up, the little girl? And, oh, I don't think that so. goes back what? some years. Um, oh, well, about this. No, I'm, I'm thinking about that time. No, um, like the, the yeah. shows where they put the little girls out and yeah. they, they dance. You know, like the the stars, um, like Beyonce or something, mm -hmm. and they're dressed like hookers or you know, yeah. whatever. Um, you know, so that's that's a really dangerous thing that's becoming normalized.
this. Yeah. Um, so whatever we can do to, to stop that and to get our, our, you know, the kids coming up after us and our daughters to, to appreciate dressing modestly, um, you know, because it, it, it is decaying our society in a, in a, in a way. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're supposed to be soft, we're supposed to be light, and it's kind of hard to be soft, to be light, to be a witness if we can't get past go. Yeah. You know, I mean, there comes a point where you're held accountable for the things you do, the things you wear. At what point will you accept that accountability? Yeah. I mean... I kind of want to speak on something personally. So me personally, I will, in my, from my view, uh, I react... This is, it's not necessarily just about like a man causing a man to assault a woman or not, whether it causes that or not. Yeah, that, that's it's, not it, every. It, it's simply something that enters the mind. Like, for example, I would I would more likely um, have the image of a woman in my head if she was wearing super tight pants and uh, showing off a lot of skin. I would be more uh, susceptible, susceptible to having that image in my head for a longer period of time versus a woman who was maybe wearing a skirt, a head covering. I wouldn't be thinking of that woman so much. Of course, I don't. God will, God forbid, if I went up and actually touched the person, I, you guys would definitely have to pray for me if I did that. Boy, <laughs> vague. We're gonna start praying for you. I need to shalom if I ever did that. But, but just my point is, like, say, and I go home, right? And it, say a woman was dressed immodestly, like maybe she's just, you know, she's very curvy and she really wears something that really shows off those curves. And I'm at my house. I'm trying to do homework. I have to daven. I got to pray. But I, the image is still in my head. So it's very inconvenient for me. But, um, yeah, like, again, it's inconvenient for me. And I, it, would be, it would be nice if I didn't have to fight it so much. But keep in mind, like, th this, th this isn't, like, something that's just one person. Oh, the woman has to control the way she dressed and that's it. No, like, I have to also work on myself, too. There's a scripture that says, you know, to rem uh, that talks about removing unclean things from your eyes. Yeah, open, but but another th another point though too is this doesn't just go one way. You see, I mean, of course, men. Res this is also the problem: is men respond more to what we see, uh, more than a woman does. So if you're a woman, it's really hard to understand. It's one thing to know about it, but it's another thing to actually experience it. Like Morpheus said, it's one thing to know know the path and actually walk it. <laughs> but uh, but the thing is, it's like, like me personally, I, of course, I don't want to like go and assault a woman, but I, it may inconvenience me in my walk with Hashem. And so you got to consider the other people. The thing, same thing goes to guys because women do react visually still. Yep. So I got to keep dressed up too. Like for example, I keep my sh shirts all the way buttoned up. I don't necessarily yeah, he want. He pretty much chokes himself. I'm like, Dude, yeah, like, I, I try not to show breathe. too much. I don't want to show too much skin. I don't walk around in tank tops anymore. I don't go shirt shirtless. Honestly, when I go to the beach now, I don't even want to take any like my shirt off or anything. Honestly, to be completely uh, hey, honest, I, I, maybe I'm not I, even. I maybe I'm not brother. even. Maybe I'm not even <laughs> much to look at. Maybe I'm not much to look at. I don't know. I'll let, I'll let somebody else be the judge of that. But. Um, <laughs> But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still got to keep in mind what I dress. To me, if women, if, if, if I, let's say if there's a group of religious women and they were like saying, hey, the way you dress is causing us to like think about you a little too much. Um, it causes us to think about other guys. Um, but uh, me personally, what I would do, I, I, would, I would say, okay, maybe I, I would be willing to change the way I dress a little bit. Even if it was something silly, like, oh, you're wearing the color green. The color of green is making me go crazy. I would say, <laughs> I don't understand that at all. <laughs> Maybe she should also control herself a little bit too, but I would stop. Me personally, I would stop wearing green. I don't have a problem with that. The other, the problem is other people have a problem with that. But, uh, oy vey. We got a lot of comments. But oh, if, it, oh, so if a guy <laughs> takes advantage of a girl, that's wrong. he no can't say, well, it's your fault. No, no, he no, 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 no. No, he can't no. say that. That's a lie. I, I know that's not what you were saying, but that's, that's not what I'm going to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lie. I, I think that's Don't what she's saying. Don't believe the lie. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Taylor's friend Maddie but said... But it still doesn't, it doesn't give you the excuse to dress how, how you want. Yeah. That is causing, that may lead to an issue. Her friend, Taylor's friend Maddie says, she says, I think it is a little too much body shame someone for their legs how come we are only talking about the way women dress which i just talked about the way men dress what about the way men dress agreed yes yeah. men should dress modestly okay. too in my opinion how come it's always the woman's fault uh, for what the men okay, do to them you're first. we're not saying it's just the woman's fault it's the 
man's fault too. If any, well, you see, in terms of like sexual assault, that's not necessarily a, like that's not necessarily always because of the way women dress. That's a power <laughs> issue. But um, and they aren't held accountable. We should be held accountable. We are consistently told to cover our bodies, which strikes guys. We are consistently told to cover our bodies, which strikes fear in us, and we are simply walking down the street and can also cause a lot of insecurity in us. We don't mean to keep repeating ourselves. Uh, our, my good buddy Tony says, uh, disagree, I've never found myself distracted or unable to focus because a woman wears what she wants. That sounds like a you problem. Okay. Agreed. Agreed. It is. It that's, is a that's, what we're, that's what we're telling. But, but I'm not the only person. We're not, I'm not saying everybody's like this. Some people are like this. What is Tony? I envy you. I don't know how you do it, man. I wish I had your. Uh, I'll, I'll, say, your I'll, I'll say. I wish I was like you, bro. Let, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. It is a battle. Everything's a battle. Everything's resistance to the mind. You got to be able to work in, work at defeating those suggestions to the mind. Right, you work at it long enough, you learn how to counteract it, and then that attack won't have the same effect. Okay, you can win the battle or you can lose the battle, but don't be fooled, it is a battle. Simply put, um, you know, but I think I think what really helps is if people would read the book Every Young Man's Struggle. This really helps both genders understand the struggle with a lot of men, us being very visual creatures, um, how we react, respond to what we see. And again, it may not necessarily make us go and, God forbid, assault somebody. No, no, it's crazy. And that, like, that like I said, to me, rare. me personally, if me, if the way I dress was causing women to stumble, I, me personally, I have no problem modifying the way I dress. If they told me to stop wearing an orthodox looking clothes, the black and white stuff, that's going to be a bit of a challenge for me. Oh, you say the penguin causes a person to stumble? I don't know. I, only if you put your foot out then, okay, and then I stumble <laughs> your leg. Other than that, ain't no way. <laughs> I'm oh my gosh. We're at 7.57 right now. What do you think? Ain't no one stumbling over a, over a penguin. I'm just saying <laughs> if. I'm, I'm making a hypothetical situation. It doesn't, it's not the cause. <laughs> But, but I would just okay. make oh, things. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, let me go, go, go. give this example for, again, going back to representation. If you have, you know, if you become a believer, you know, eventually that's going to change the way you dress. Yes. Um, you know, if you are dressing immodestly. Ooh, Tony made a good but point. But as for, like, go. you know, I just think of an example of, of a man. To me, something inappropriate would be, you know, wearing your pants sagging and, like, yeah. You know, that dressing. Nasty. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but you know that would that would be something. I don't know. Just one example I think of, like for how men could yeah. dress immodestly. I mean, the other way that a man can dress immodestly and is becoming a trend. I don't know how this is a trend. My generation, this was not a trend. <laughs> you thought a person was, yeah, you know, uh, skinny jeans, Bruh. No skinny jeans. Seriously. Uh, don't you wear skinny jeans? Yeah. <laughs> Bruh. No skinny jeans. I, 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 I do have a standard, though. I said there's got to be wrinkles I mean, in the pants. We, 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 wore, we, we, wore, we wore baggy jeans. The baggy and the better. I mean, these things are like hammer pants. I want to uh, address the point. So, again, it's all, you know, it's all in the eyes of the beholder. That's yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, you can only have so much control over. Tony made a good point. He says, maybe because I joined here in the middle of it, I'm not going to get the full story of context. But seriously, if it bothers you, don't look. Yeah, then, um, I mean, here's the other part of that. I keep going back to it is a battle. Remember, you have Satan running around like a roaring lion seeking who you may devour. He's going to, as soon as you start to resist the temptation, he's going to throw every single temptation at you. Okay? Don't be fooled. You will be, you'll be, you'll be hounded. I mean, if you have an issue with a certain type of look of a woman and you try to resist the temptation to entertain those thoughts, you'll be, you'll be surrounded by that. But here's the a, here's a, here's a key, though. Here's, here's, a good, here's the good news. Here's the good news. You, you, get the, you get to practice the fight. You get to actually learn about yourself, your, your weak points and your strong points. I mean, you go to, when you go to fight, Physically, if you're, if you're a boxer, if you've ever been in any type of training, you have that repeated interaction over and over again. And you get to learn a little bit about yourself with each interaction. What works, what doesn't work. How to duck. <laughs> you know, how to bob, how to weave. 
I mean, same thing when it comes in the spiritual realm when the battling against temptations. Learn how to fight. And fight. <laughs> you know? Come on. <laughs> so, like, so, I mean, like, I actually, uh, I like the point that Tony made because I, I try not to look, honestly. Like, I try to. Like, a lot of times, this is what I say. It's just like, oh, yeah, babe, like, I'm going to have a funny looking neck when I get older. Because, like, a lot of times when I'm walking on my campus, I got to look at the ground because it's just yeah, like. Yeah, I would, but it's it everywhere. Fight it. Fight. I can try to fight it. No, what no, no, if, no. What you if don't, I don't want to fight you, it? <laughs> you, don't, you don't try to fight. You fight. So Taylor says. She, Taylor I mean. says she likes wearing tube tops, crop tops, mini skirts, dresses, shorts, and bikinis during nice weather. And if I get sexually assaulted, it's not on me. And if someone cat calls me, I'm not allowed to be upset, and it doesn't make it right. That's my point. Uh, okay, to your point, I understand where you're coming from. I'll just say, hey, even still, be careful. That's all we're saying. Be careful. Okay? I mean, you can wear what you want. Just be careful of the presentation um, and the response you might get. Be mindful of it. You can wear whatever you want. Just be mindful of what happens afterward. Not saying you cause it because people have, a lot of people in them have a lot of evilness. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Just be careful. Simply put, you don't go to a dangerous area flashing money. <laughs> okay, you won't get robbed. All we're saying is be careful where, where you go with what you're wearing. And, you know, be mindful of yourself. Be mindful of your clothing. I mean, if you're a believer, then you're already mindful of it. And because of the spirit of Hashem is going to convict you where you need to change. At certain levels of growth, he'll teach you and show you through his word. This is just a commentary. Yeah, really. Okay, this is a commentary. Well, unfortunately, the issue is uh, the Bible doesn't get really specific on like what kind of stuff to wear, actually. Other I mean, than I, I can. Other, well, it tells us. And that's not. a good thing. Oh, it does actually tell us a few things yeah. to wear. It, it does us, say a few yeah. things. On that, the four corners of our yes. garment, we have to wear the tzitzit. <laughs> so. Yeah. You have um, fringes, head covering, garments of the salvation, filthy garments. So, Taylor, like, um, you okay. know, we, we, I agree. Oh, wait, she says she has pepper spray, and I'm about to get a handgun when I can legally own one, but I shouldn't have to watch my back going out. No, you should always watch your back going out. It doesn't matter how you dress. You should always that, watch your back going out. It doesn't even matter how you dress. You this, should this watch your America. back. This is America. Who are you fooling? <laughs> I'm saying, <laughs> Taylor, I, I personally think you should watch your back no matter what. It doesn't, this isn't even an issue about dress. This yeah. is just like, there's just bad people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you always watch your back. Be mindful, head on the switch. But we just, all we're, time. we're not saying, we're not trying to like ruin the fun. We're saying, you can't wear this. If you want to wear this, you can't no. be fun. We're saying, be mindful of your surroundings. Be be mindful of your dress. Be mindful of your witness. She says, hold on, she says, right, they have the right to catcall, but you also have the right to be upset. Yeah, you do. Don't bust a cap at them, but... With all due respect, <laughs> I really think that if someone sees someone dressing lewdly and they go home and thinking about it, I can't help but to think there's something else going wrong. Again. It's on men, the individual. When it's on the individual, again, men react strongly to what we see more than a woman does. You don't understand what it's like unless you're a man. No, well, well what she, I think she, what she's saying is, you know, I can't have any responsibility for what you're thinking. Okay. And, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a, oh, uh, a difficult thing because well, it, it, we you are, see, you know, I, I'm I, not saying it's okay for me to be thinking that. It's wrong. Yeshua says, if you even look at a woman with lust, you commit adultery with her in your heart. If you don't so when I'm doing good, that, I admit sin. it. I'm a sinner. I do that. I sin. The problem... Yes, I sin, and it's wrong for me to do that. My point is, though, the battle is still there. I still have to fight it. I still have to go against my... Uh, I still have to go against you. Know, my Yetzir my, my evil inclination. So, I mean, we can't... <laughs> Well, just say like you know, there's a bartender and he he serves a drink to an underage person. Whose mm -hmm. fault is it? You know, is it the kid's fault for taking the drink or is it his fault for giving it to him? You know, there's there's it's on both ends. You yeah, know? true. It's on both ends. Um, you can help the world be make tukum rectification, or you can um, hinder it. Simply put, I mean, you can uh, help. Tony, Tony says his fault. He didn't carve. You didn't carve? 
Oh, he didn't card. Ah, uh, you know what? Yeah, but he, it's his, his part. Who let him in the door? No, Where's his he, parents? He it's his parents' fault for letting <laughs> him get that far from the house. <laughs> <laughs> we know you sin. Okay. Oh yeah. You see, you got evidence, man. You got evidence. Right? I got. I got. I got to be honest. Like there, there is no man without sin except for Yeshua. Oh, well, I, think, I think that's a big thing in our our culture again, though, is that you know everybody wants to say, well, I only have to be responsible for me, and that's not true. No. We have accountability that we have to have towards yep. towards everyone. To love your neighbor as yourself. <coughs> you know, you know, what, do you, what do you do with that? that um, well, I don't know awesome. if you guys got to see the video I did. Um, uh, it's called The Harlot. But watch that and maybe it'll help you. Um, All right, you know. where's it at? No, it's too long to watch. Uh, but, I, I know what I'm saying is for them. But it's about, you know, the woman that got caught in adultery. Yeah. And then, is it on YouTube you know, or is it a movie? Or? It's on my Facebook, but it's on it's a YouTube All right, let's share that to his page so that people here can. Yeah, um, but it just, um you know, Yeshua was able to look at her, you know, and look past whatever she was wearing or whatever, yeah. you know, filth she had going on. So, you know, maybe that could help you to. Yeah, you see, again, this goes back to the issue of... I'm not uh, saying it's going to, you know, take take not, that human nature away, mm, no, you know. No, but, no. But we have to deny our flesh and die to it every yeah. day. So it's something that's going to, you know, you're still... Oh, Tony on, Burns, I think, you know... Uh, when you say, please do, Tony, are you talking about sending... Uh, you, Send the link. Sending the link to the video. I can post yeah. it in the comments yeah. if you want. Yeah, do so. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'd have to figure that but out. But I think as you practice it more, yeah. it'll become... Also... I think you'll, you'll I think, Holy Spirit will make you grow in that. I think also going back to the whole temptation, like we were going to example, like sometimes when I'll have I was thinking of what I saw later on. It also depends on the situation of the person. Like for me, I've been single for like almost six, like five going on six years. Like sometimes you can get desensitized to certain things, you know. Um, do you want to talk about what we were talking about when you were in Greece, or is that too much? Like, well, we're almost out of time. Uh, some people, class. some people are more reacted to what they see than others. But um. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly state this: in certain cultures around the world, um, there are. All right, thanks, thanks, Taylor. <laughs> 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 <Sorry, sorry. laughs> Shalom. I hope this thing blesses you. Like, I don't, I, we don't mean to step on toes. We just want to, you know, we, we're trying to preach truth with love, you know. Yeah. And ultimately, if you want to agree to disagree, that's totally that's that's between you and Hashem. Don't worry, don't worry, we don't have. We still love address. you. It's um. okay. We can all disagree. It's fine. <laughs> you know, that's a big thing about Judaism. We got the saying: two Jews in a room, three opinions. Yeah, same But I just want, them. well, Taylor, I want Hashem to bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Make face shine upon you and be gracious, gracious unto to you. you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. In the name of the Prince of Peace. Completeness in all things. I hope you're doing well, Taylor. Shalom, shalom. And you should be able to, you know, walk out of the house feeling confident about what you're wearing. So, if, again, that goes back to you personally. If you don't feel like, you know, if you feel like you're not dressing how you should, then, you know, go back and change. But if you feel confident about it, then walk out the house and, and be confident about it. Amen. Do, you know, what's that scripture about? You, you have to, your conscience has to... To me, it's a really, to me the big issue is it's a faith issue. Um, it, it's it's really it's really different for somebody who's in covenant with Hashem than somebody who has yet to experience the God of Israel in person. You know, it, it's really hard. It's something that I can imagine it must be really difficult to understand. Like there was a lot of things I didn't think I would end up believing before I decided to follow Yeshua and Torah. I remember when I was in high school, like there was a lot of things I, I did in high school, some things I don't do anymore, some things I still struggle with, but I feel a lot more convicted now than when I did before I was a I was a, yeah. a follower of Yeshua Halibid. So there's also that, it's, it's really hard to understand, like, not following the God of Israel, so that's also another factor. Well, you just take the, take the few moments and remember, you know. <laughs> yeah, Trust me. Even, my, even my definition of what you know, what I wear modestly now is different than what it was a year ago. Agreed. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Or what it was when I was a kid. You know, to be completely honest, I, 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 the head the head covering and the, you know, the dressing modestly, I find it attractive, not in the sense that it, like, causes, like, a temptation, but the modesty is, like, attractive. Like, like how righteousness can be attractive, you know what I mean? I never would have expected myself to, like, be find that attractive. I think that's pretty crazy. Uh, I guess what it... And one men are looking at it is, 
the person has decided to, you know, show themselves in a way that only, uh, I guess you say, it will attract the right type of element, in a sense. It will attract the right type of element. Not something that is uh, perverse. You know what I mean? I, I, listen, I'm not sure if I'm explaining that right. But you dress a certain way, you'll attract certain things. And if you're dressing in search for a husband, then dress in search for a husband. If you're dressing in search for a job, then dress in search yeah, for a job. Yeah, to me, I, I, I think about that too sometimes. Like, you know, if you're trying to show a little skin, it's like, what if that person is trying to get into a relationship with somebody? Would you say that would kind of like... Be, there, there can be a lenience or... I'll put it this way. It's really up to the individual what they feel they really want. Do they need to show skin? Is it necessary? I mean, yeah, just, just bear with me. I, I gotta go. I really do. Do you need to show skin on the first day? Tony says, lest we forget, I want to hear about Greece. Oh, yeah. It's a musical that I was in like yeah. when I was in high school. <laughs> I played Eugene. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. Um, the, certain cultures, uh, certain countries, um, nudity is like run of the mill. Okay. It's just common. Common practice is nothing strange. Um, in certain cultures, they glorify the body. Um, that's their religion. They glorify the body. Especially in Greece, they glorify the body. Uh, that's why you see like, Zeus and a lot of the statues are built a certain way because they glorify the body. They worship the body. The body has been, is their God, okay? Understand that. And because of that, they have certain, a lot of the areas in that, well, in, in, this, in that country, are, they show a lot of the body. And it's not restricted just to women, men too, and kids. So you go to certain places, everybody's in their birthday clothes, okay? Everybody. And you just go out there for, you know, entertainment and, and person walk by, you're like, what? Then, then another person walk by, you're like, what? what? Then another person walk by, and then you have a whole crowd of people walk by, and now they're surrounded, you're like the only one sitting there. Not in the birthday suit. It's, and they're staring at you like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is not the culture I come from. <coughs> so, um, what happens, what can happen is, especially people of that culture, you become desensitized to that temptation. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but I am saying in certain cultures, that is part of their culture. What I am saying is, we don't need that culture in a biblical culture, if you get if we get my, my drift, because uh, there is apparently I uh, saw on um, Facebook a, 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 a post about a nude um, church bus. Yeah, I'm What's like, get out of here. What is it? What get is it? Number four, or whatever that's called. I don't, I, I don't know. I saw thirty four. Is that called? I don't know. I, I just saw the post. I ignored it. Removed it. But you know, this topic came up. Let you know, there's people out there that will abuse the word of Hashem, oh. will misuse uh. it, misinterpret it to their own, yeah, to their own devices. Where, you know, that's how they came into the world. Yeah. But then God Himself clothed them. Bingo. Okay, so uh, Tony. So that. Tony made another comment. Uh, actually, me and Tony, uh, oh. we met in Okinawa back in when I was in Okinawa right. back before, probably even before I even started following Yeshua and His Tola. But he says, in Japan, part of my imagery, we'll just, I'll just censor some of the things you just, if, if you're worried about. Oh, yeah, this you was a, in stuff, Japan, man. part of my imagery, they're, they're a man part and nudity. Every, there's man parts and nudity everywhere. It's yeah. culture and it's not a big deal. Perhaps if I'm understanding you, you correctly, after living there for six years, perhaps I'm desensitized. It, it, to an extent, yes. To an extent, yes. Um... For instance, here's a here's a little bit of my early story. Okay, um, I was at a certain college, uh, my first year, and I was in a classroom, a math class, a mathematics class, and um, there was an image of a nude woman above the chalkboard, uh, above the whiteboard, and Shalom Pablo. Mm -hmm. I would come Shalom. in each class before class, a couple minutes early. 
and I'll take some notebook paper and some tape and I'll go up there and cover the image with, with paper. I'm like, yo, this is a, a math class, not an art class. I respect art, but this is not art class. This is a math class. I don't need that distraction. That's where I was in my level of observancy. I mean, I was young believer, but that le but I recognize that that this is not something I need to, you know, have in front of me. Because Hashem said, um, "Do not place. I will not place any unclean thing before my eyes." And then He also says, um, "If I know to do good and don't do Shalom. it, to me it is sin." So I keep I keep those things in mind. And after a while of me doing that, you know, covering the picture every class for a week, I got called to the dean's office. And then that got escalated to the point that uh, they wanted to, you know, pretty much get me out of class. I had to go to the, um, oh, to the main campus downtown, the main campus, and sit down with the couple of department heads because like, all I wanted to do was cover up a new, some, a new picture on a wall in my math class. And believe it or not, it got into the paper of the school. Huh. Seriously. If it's, if it's part of the culture, that's fine. But again. We are set apart to have yeah. our own culture, and that's what we're trying to, um, what do you call it, not develop it. Yeah, that Greek culture, not our culture. <clears throat> yeah, that's an issue. I've had one person also make the point to me, you know, people in Africa, there's certain cultures in Africa where uh, people dress like completely nude. Yeah. Yeah, maybe they're, I'm sure That's everybody, you know, and, and people walk around and it's nothing. It's just like every other day, like it's nothing new. But if, if you try to do that here and now, all of a sudden, there's going to be a lot different reaction. You see, it takes a lot of, because they grow up like that. And even if somebody moves there and they live there for long enough, eventually they can get desensitized. Oh, it's useful. I'm used to seeing that. It's different, from, especially when people are like, when people, religious people like me, you see, I, I, I try to dress modestly in, 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 in at least some degree. God willing, but, but um, simply put, we're not and we're trying used to, to being around people. We're used to culture. being around other uh, people who practice Judaism, like us, who are dressed a certain way. And when we go off somewhere else and see something dressed differently, it causes a reaction within me. Versus compared to somebody hey. who's with that all the time. Simply put, love the individual and um, try to show a little bit of light, not in hate, not in anger, not in not in any type of negative context, but in a loving manner. You know, just. You know, dude, nice, nice, whatever, woman, nice, whatever. Um, you know, there's a a, 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 a a head covering I think you would enjoy. There's a, a shirt that you must buy, you know. You know, something nice. But let them, bless them. Literally, if you, if, if, you come, if you come across someone that's constantly wearing something that's, in your mind, inappropriate, and that's, you know, relative in itself, Buy them something. Don't continuously correct them. Buy them some clothing. Invest in them. Invest in their uh, in their upbringing, or invest in them a little bit. If you really, 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 really care about the individual and about the way they dress or whatever, buy them some clothing. They might get the hint because you have invested some money into them. Just, just saying. If you can't do it, if you can't pray for them, I don't know. Uh, I guess I guess to go. Okay. I yeah, gotta we'll go. I got to go. I mean, I got to Yeah, well, I mean, we're 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 an hour and 18 yeah. Yeah, okay. minutes. But uh yeah, that's all the time we got for now. We appreciate you. We appreciate everybody who's watching, everybody who comments. Um thank you Taylor if you uh or decide to watch this again. Um thanks Tony for your input. Uh Yochanan. Let Kathy. me say one thing. I'm sorry. But in a, in something positive to take away is that, you know, I feel, I don't know, cha dressing the way that I do now does change the way that I look at the world. Um, you know, because I know that I'm doing it for a purpose. And again, you know, especially like when we wear the, the seat seat. Yeah, seat Those seat. are to remind you of the commandments. And, yeah. you know, when you're purposely dressed in a certain way, oh, it continually yeah. reminds you of what's in your heart, you know, Shalom. that you're wanting to do. Yeah, so we we appreciate everybody who's watching, giving your input. Uh, I know I know I'm sure it, this is a this is a very touchy subject. So like, if you say the wrong touchy. thing or or say something that sounds like the wrong thing, you can really step on some toes. Yeah. And we, our goal here is not to get up and just make people angry and to offend people. We want to edify people. We want to just 
We really what does it say like you have to dress like us? No, 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 no. No, you don't have to just go black and white, wear head no, covering. No, 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 no. We we just we're concerned, you know. We no. care about people. We don't want people to be in situations they don't need to be, and we don't want people doing things they to other people they shouldn't do. Um, Can we put, you know, we we. Both people need to be prayed for no matter what, uh, even if it's not an issue about dress. But um, focus on clothing yourself with righteousness first, and then the other clothes will, you know, they'll follow. Also, us. like following Hashem, just ask Hashem to reveal it to you. Like, how do you want me to dress? What offends you? What what? Ask Hashem, like, what what do, what is something that may cause a stumbling in some kind of manner? Um, what can prevent causing, causing stumbling? What do you want me to look like? How, do, how can I edify people? How can I be an old in the light to the nations? But, um, but anyways, so that's all the time we got. I want to wish you all shalom. I will say the Aaronic benediction. Uh, you, Shia, do you mind saying the English? All right, I'll say the Aaronic, Aaronic benediction. <coughs> God willing, I'll say it right. Hashem is only the Bapshah, the Yeshua. Mashiach. Ivalecha Adonai Vishmalecha, Ya Ira Adonai Panavelecha Vichonecha, Isa Adonai Panavelecha, Vayasemlecha, Shalom, Bashem, Hasach Shalom, Yeshua, Hamashiach. Amen. Amen. You got it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> may the Lord bless you and keep you. May Hashem make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he cause his countenance to um, be shown before you. Um, may he bless you in everything you need. Uh, may he cause peace uh, to fall upon you, surround you. May he comfort you in your times of distress. May he hug you in your times of need. May he provide for you in times of need. May he hug you in times of comfort. For those of you that out there that are sick, may Hashem cause healing to come to you. Bones, sickness of all sorts. May Hashem just totally um, cause restoration in you. And for those of you out there that don't know Mashiach, I pray that Hashem will cause his Mashiach to be revealed to you in a way that you can receive. Mashiach is Messiah. So. Yeah, sorry, yeah, mm -hmm. Messiah. In a way that you can that you will be able to receive him. Alright? So Lila tells everyone with Hashem, Amen, Amen. Alright. Yeah. Alright, yeah, Shalom, right. in the name of the Prince of Peace, Yeshua our Messiah. Shalom, Lila Shalom. And for those of you who are excited Shalom. for tomorrow night, a Gitin Freilich Shabbos, a good and cheerful Shabbat. Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen.